Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. In the last few weeks, we have spotted a significant increase in scans on port 26. And well, uh, we're honestly just wondering what were people looking for here? Nothing typically listening on port 26, but of course, sometimes users get a little bit crafty and run systems on different ports. When you're looking at Shodan, the top listener on port 26 tends to be a mail server. Exim is one that sort of stands out here. And Exim had a number of well-documented vulnerabilities recently. So our first guess was, well, uh, people probably just run Exim on port 26 to avoid some of the blocking that a lot of ISPs do on port 25. And now someone figured this out and is starting to scan for Exim vulnerabilities. So we set up a honeypot to listen on port 26, but so far we haven't really seen any XM attacks. Instead, it looks like the only thing that attackers are really looking for on port 26 is, well, yet more Telnet brute forcing. So they're essentially looking for users that run Telnet on port 26. Not sure how successful this is. Shodan does not show a significant number of Telnet servers on port 26, but maybe someone discovered here something that Shodan missed. On the other hand, it wouldn't be the first time that some attacker sort of has some wild idea like this and is just sending a botnet after a port without really having any success. And on Monday, Pratt received an email with a malicious attachment. So, well, he couldn't help himself but to take a closer look at it. It was one of those encrypted zip files. The password for it was 777. Well, and no big surprise, it included a malicious Word document. Now, the Word document tricked the user into enabling macros by essentially claiming that it was created with a prior version of Word. And as a result, the user is supposed to click uh, those checkboxes enabling macros. It then downloaded the YourSniff malware. In addition, it also did download Tridex. Tridex is one of those banking trojans. It tries to steal online banking credentials. That's probably here the end game. That's uh, what the attacker is really going for in this case. I'm really surprised that attackers are still using this very same scheme they have been using for years now, but they always, well, I guess, uh, find some willing victims installing the malware for them. And remember, Windows 7 will receive its last public free security update in January. So starting this week, Microsoft is selling extended security updates for Windows 7 that will cover you in case you need to use Windows 7 after January next year. Now, Microsoft has been offering extended security updates for prior operating system versions as well. But what's a little bit different with Windows 7 is that this time small businesses will also be able to buy this service. Pricing varies. There are some free options, at least for the first year. If you subscribe to various uh, Windows 10 or other packages, so check with Microsoft, see what they have to offer. It is getting progressively more expensive with each year that you're subscribing to this update service. So it may just be easier and cheaper to finally let go of Windows 7. At this point, about a quarter of desktops are still running Windows 7. So there's certainly uh, some need for an extended update service. I guess that many of these users, of course, are home users that will not purchase the extended service. And if you are using a QNAP network storage device and still have the PhotoStation software installed, it's time to update. 
There are four new vulnerabilities that QNAP patched in PhotoStation that do allow unauthorized access, the injection of arbitrary code, as well as the access and the modification of system files on these devices. So in short, it allows for a complete system compromise. One problem I have pointed out with these devices in the past is that they do come with a bunch of these applications, usually bundled by default. Most users will probably only use a handful, maybe even only one or two of these applications. So the first thing you should always do with these devices, uninstall, remove all unneeded applications. And then yes, I'll remind you again, do never ever expose these devices to the public internet. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.